Mosley on MasterChef. A star-studded team challenge. Shut up! The amazing Jane Lynch. Saw the home cooks feeding the cast and crew of the hit show, Glee. The winning team is the red team! After Chrissy's team was crushed. You got destroyed. It was time for another painstaking pressure test. Chrissy targeted Beanie for elimination. What have you done here? And hit her target. It's time to take that apron off. Tonight, it's a gruesome mystery box challenge. Oh, my God. There are children who will not sleep tonight. And last season's winner, Christine Ha, returns. It's incredibly inspiring. With a surprising twist. You're going to be cooking this challenge without sight. And two MasterChef heavyweights go head to head. If you want to talk behind my back, I have the balls to say it up here in front of me. I said I knew it. You're done. Come on down. Let's go. There's 13 people left in this competition. I'm still here. I'm still here. Welcome back, everyone. 13 will be a unlucky number for one of you, because tonight, at least one person will be eliminated from MasterChef. It's time for your next mystery box challenge. The winner of this mystery box challenge will get a huge advantage in the upcoming elimination. On the count of three, lift your boxes. I'm just praying, please be vegetables, please be vegetables. One. I'm hoping for shellfish. Mussels, clams, oysters, something exotic, something sexy. Two. Three. <laughs> a delicious pig's head. It's smiling at me. I can see its eyeballs. Now, there are children who will not sleep tonight because we took that box off that pig head. Great chefs know how to cook with the entire animal, from the snout to the tail. It's an ingredient like this that truly separates the chefs from the home cooks. Lucky for you, you do not have to break down those heads. We've already done that bit for you. Thank God. Open your cupboards and remove the sheet pans. There you have ears, tongue, cheek, and pork snout, all ready to cook with. You'll have 90 minutes to prepare something delicious using any part of that pig's head. You'll also have use of a limited pantry to help make your pig dish have us squeal with excitement. <laughs> All of you, your 90 minutes starts now. Let's go. For the first time in this competition, we are requiring them to cook like a restaurant chef. For most people, it's a very, very odd ingredient. There's no longer home cooking here. This no. is professional cooking. No. I have never cooked a pig's head before, but I love pork. I'm going to do the black eyed peas, cornbread, some collards, try to get some crispy fried pig ears. Pig heads does not bother me at all. I've seen a lot worse than this. I mean, it's, yeah, horrifying. I'm pretty sure vegetarian Brie is peeing her pants over there, but it's not the worst thing I've ever seen. So the main components are the tongue, the ears, mm -hmm. the cheek, and the snout. Yep. Right. What would you do with the tongue? I would blanch the tongue first in a fragrant boiling water. Then from there, I'd braise it and serve that with a delicious creamed mashed potato with some fresh grated horseradish. Who do you think is going to struggle today? Who's going to really have a hard time? Clearly, Brie, God bless her, vegetarian, totally out of her comfort zone. I think she's going to struggle big time. Mm -hmm. Brie, how are you doing? I'm great, Chef. How are you? How is he? 
I don't want to look at him while I'm cooking. Him. While I'm cooking him, you don't want to look at someone's face so, while you're cooking them. Uh, right, what are you doing? Kind of like a farmer's breakfast. A farmer's breakfast? Yeah, crispy pig's ear with a poached egg on top with an heirloom tomato salad that I have. Wow. And then I'm going to do the, the cheeks. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Chef. Lynn. Yes, sir. What are you making? I'm going to try something a little different. I did a braised uh, pork cheek, and I'm going to deep fry them. With what? What are you serving it with? The tongue is going to be a little like Asian, so I'm going to do like a French Asian type of thing. Wow. Finally. What does finally mean? What have we been telling you since you started that's lacking? Seasoning. Yeah. Seasoning. So you got seasoning there. you're getting it there. Perfect. <laughs> Very impressive. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank All you. Right. Right, Johnny, you're a carpenter. Great with your hands. What is that? It's gonna be good. This is the cheek, this is the tongue. Wow. Mm. What do you braise that in? Pork stock we had in the fridge back there, some red wine. That's delicious. Red miracle. What's happening? What do you mean, what's happening? The flavor profiles are delicious. Now you seem to be understanding the integrity of putting this dish together. Well, I'm sick of getting yelled at by you guys up there. I gotta come up and have you be happy with but one of these dishes. But we know you can cook, that's just it. And so we get frustrated when you go too far off the bean track. That is delicious. All right, good thank luck. you. Jesse, oh, what's going on? You feel confident with cooking pork's head? I've got the cheeks really tender right now. I'm really happy. I'm going to have a little black bean, roasted jalapeno, corn. Going with more of a Mexican-inspired... Mexican southern mix. Okay, good luck. Good. Thank you so much. Five minutes left. Start thinking on the plating from now, guys. Yeah, the competition, in my mind, has just gone to a completely different level. You can see these guys absolutely rising in confidence. Yeah. Johnny sounds amazing. He's braising all those proteins together and putting them inside a taco shell. Sweet. Beth as well. I mean, really? she's doing like a cassoulet with a black eyed pea. Really nice. Lynn has finally understood what seasoning's all about. Yes. And he braised yeah. the pork cheek, lightly floured it, fried it. Nice. Give me this good. 60 seconds to go. Let's go, guys. Come on, finishing touches now. Clean the board of the plate. Presentation is everything. I want to see the oink on the plate. Let's go, guys. Come on. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and stop. Now. Let's go, guys. Come on. Five, four, three, two, one, and stop. Hands in the air. Hands in the air. Good job. Well done. Having carefully sampled everything throughout the challenge, look at the diversity. The judges now take one final look to identify three standout dishes. The Mystery Box winner will receive a huge advantage in the upcoming elimination test. The first dish that we're dying to taste. This was complex. It was highly sophisticated, and it was nice, finally, to see this individual shine. The first dish we want to taste, Lynn. Let's go. Great job. I don't think that Lynn has a refined palate. I think people see him as a top dog because of his beautiful presentation. Looks incredible. Now, what is it? Traditional red wine braised pork cheek on top of Asian braised pork tongue, a parsnip puree, a ginger scallion oil, and some fried tomatoes. Wow. How did you make the puree so fine? I worked that chinois to death until it got into the pan. You've got attitude on there. The whole thing is just, you know, melting your mouth. You had the balance right between the acidity, the seasoning, and the dish has got class. Thank you, chef. Well done. Wow. Delicious. You know how to make food look beautiful, but this is the first time you've really been able to season with assertiveness. Good job. Thank you. What we have here is an incredible example of, uh, of fusion, the various sauces, and then the technique on the braise. I mean, I look at this plate, and I'm thinking, is it a $24 appetizer or a $36 entree? And that means a lot. If I was out in that room right now, 
and I knew what this dish tasted like, I'd be terrified. Good job, Lynn. Thanks so much. The second dish used both the cheek and the ears. It was really seasoned with a lot of complexity and flavors. I want to win this one. And it's like, I, I think I got a shot here. Like, I might get called up there. Step forward. Jesse. So tell me what we have. The cheek and ear braised in pork stock and chicken stock with black eyed peas, roasted corn. That just explodes with flavor. The uh, cook on the pork is great. That's a contender. That's delicious. Yeah. Thank tasting. you so much. The braised pork cheek's good. The seasoning throughout, like the heat and salinity, every piece has the right amount of seasoning. Good job. Thank you so much. So you're a southern girl. It's like Georgia meets Mexico. It is. It's a good way to put it. I mean, seasoned beautifully. Mm -hmm. You want for nothing on that plate um, except more. Well done. Thank you so much. Thank you. The third and final dish we want to bring up here was delivered by a home cook that today really surprised us. So far, this person has consistently been in the middle of the pack. Please step forward. Johnny. So, what is it? It's a braised pork tongue and cheek taco with uh, sweet and spicy tomato jam, toasted cashew, guacamole, and then roasted corn and a red pepper relish. Mm. This dish is just really good. <laughs> with these tacos, you're on the top of your game. You think you got more of this in you? I absolutely do. That was praying that you weren't going to do some kind of, like, maple-glazed, pig face cotton candy. That's awesome. I want to keep beating it. That's like tailgating at the Super Bowl, right? Good job. Thank you. Um, visually, the jam, the corn, and then just the way you braise the tongue and cheek. It may look simple, but it delivers a punch. That is delicious. You showed restraint, and you've reined it in. And when you start doing that, that creates the wow factor. And you've delivered that in a freaking taco. I think it's your best dish so far. All right, thank you, Chef. Good job. <laughs> it's funny, you have like three Around the kinds of dishes, right? Mm -hmm. You have a very sophisticated restaurant dish, yeah. you have a very accomplished home dish, and then you have a tailgating dish. And that's... But... Makes sense. <sighs> three very contrasting dishes. I mean, from high end, fancy, unique to Southern style, that smokiness to a formidable snack elevated to the Premier League. And let me tell you, that was a difficult mystery box challenge. Great job. The headline act who will get that huge advantage in the upcoming elimination challenge. That dish was cooked by Congratulations. The anticipation is so frustrating. It's just like, tip, tip, tip. It's going to be my name this time. Um, Lynn, Jesse, Johnny, three very contrasting dishes. But only one can be the winner. The headline act who will get that huge advantage in the upcoming elimination challenge, that dish was cooked by. Congratulations. Lynn. Oh. Jesse and Johnny, great job. Lynn, are you ready to see this unique advantage? I'm so ready for this. Let's go. Really good job indeed. Phenomenal. 
The winner of the mystery box is now in control of the elimination test, where at least one person will leave the competition. Are you ready to find out the theme of tonight's elimination challenge? Bring it on, yeah. Well, we're not going to tell you what the theme is. Instead, we have invited a special guest that will do that for us. Wow, OK. This, this person has actually stood exactly where you're standing now. Somebody that went through the fire and came out stronger and on top. Wow. Welcome last year's MasterChef winner, Christine Ha. Seriously? Welcome back. Christine? There she <laughs> is. Oh, my gosh. Nice to see you, my darling. <laughs> Hi, Christine. Hi. My name is Lynn. Nice to meet you, Nice Lynn. to meet oh, you. you're very tall. I'm very tall. So. <laughs> now, as the winner of MasterChef, Christine recently released her very own best-selling cookbook titled Recipes from My Home Kitchen, Asian and American Comfort Food. So, Christine, how's the last year been? Crazy. My whole life has changed. There's so many opportunities. I've had my dream come true writing my own cookbook, so it's been great. Now, Lynn, as the winner of the Mystery Box Challenge, Christine is giving you the option of choosing from her three favorite ingredients, Ooh. all heavily featured in that stunning new cookbook. I'm ready, yeah? I'm ready. So, Lynn, please step forward. First up, chicken. Yeah. Christine, how does it feature in your book? I would say every chapter has chicken. Every in it. chapter. Except for dessert. Except for dessert. <laughs> yes. All right, Lynn, box number two. All right. Oh, hello there, gorgeous. It's a catfish. Meow. <laughs> it's an ingredient I grew up eating. If you can cook it well, it can be very delicious. But dealing with the skin, the fatty parts, mm -hmm. and the bones, that will be a challenge. Yeah. Right, Lynn, now for your final option. It is, wow, a stunning Live Dungeness crab. Delicious, oh gosh. unique, sweet, incredible. So, Lynn, for winning that mystery box challenge, you are safe from elimination. Now, listen up. One person will have to cook with one ingredient that you choose. The rest will have to cook with another ingredient. Right now is your perfect opportunity to try and take out that one individual that is your Achilles heel. I think it might have to be Chrissy. She tends to have this attitude about her. She has this confidence that I think no one else really has. So I want to make sure that she is faced with an ingredient that she doesn't deal with a lot. And we'll see what happens when she hits that. So you're aiming fire at Chrissy. Which would she struggle with? I think Chrissy would struggle more with catfish. Catfish. I don't know if they have many catfish in South Philly. Yeah. I hope not. <laughs> I know for certain Chrissy's going to be mad at me for a long, long time. She doesn't take these things very well, but it is what it is. It's a competition. So which protein is going to the rest of the competitors? Is it crab or the chicken? I choose. Uh, Lynn, please, you know where to go. Because Lin won that mystery box challenge, he is now safe from elimination. The rest of you, on the other hand, are not, because at least one of you will be going home at the end of this challenge tonight. Back in the pantry, we told Lin the theme of this challenge. But we didn't do it alone. We were joined by a very special guest. Last year's winner, Christine Ha. Ooh. Welcome back. I was so happy to see Christine walk through the door. She's been exactly where we've been, and she won with some intense adversity. It's incredibly inspiring. OK, listen carefully. In the pantry, we gave Lynn the option of choosing from three proteins that feature heavily in Christine's new cookbook. Uh, Christine, what were they? There's chicken, mm -hmm. catfish. Surprise, surprise. And crab. Ooh. Wow. Mm. Lynn got to choose one of those three ingredients for one individual. 
and another ingredient for everyone else. Lynn, please come back down and escort Christine upstairs to sit this challenge out with you. The rest of you will now have five minutes in the pantry to see what ingredient Lynn chose for you. Your time in the pantry starts now. Let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. He's doing this because Beanie was his boy, and I sent Beanie packing. You, you just with the wrong girl. Uh, <laughs> Double whammy, right? I have to cook a pig's head, and now I have to cook a live animal? It's a bad day for a vegetarian. Let's go, guys. Chrissy, wow. It's me. Push, push, push. Before you start, Christine has one more surprise. In my mind, it's a game changer. Open your drawers, and you'll find a blindfold. Wow. You're going to be cooking this challenge without sight. <laughs> I am speechless. Are you serious? This is not cool. Blindfold on, please. This is how Christine cooks three times a day. You guys are experiencing it for one hour. You've chosen those ingredients. Now get to understand them even better. Taste and smell everything. Your 60 minutes starts now. I start grabbing and I think I'm putting it in the right spot. I feel the crab and I'm like, bad idea, bad idea. <laughs> it sounds insane. How am I gonna cut the crab without looking at the crab? Come on, Luca. I'm gonna cut a finger off, I'm sure. Blindfold on, please. Your 60 minutes starts now. Come on, guys. If I could do it, you can do it. <laughs> it sounds insane. Come on, Luca. Be careful with the knives. Everybody, stop! Christine has a very cruel sense of humor. She was only joking. Take your blindfolds off. <laughs> oh, my god. Cool. I feel so relieved. It would have been a nightmare. You know how many people would have cut their finger off? How was that? Terrifying. Awful. Awful. I am at a loss of words. You're amazing. It's a challenge. I have a lot of respect for you, Christine. Right, total respect. Just gone up to another level, right? Yeah. Yeah. OK, everyone. Well, this isn't a joke. At least one of you will be going home. Your 60 minutes starts now. Tough on this one. What do you think of Lynn's strategy? You know, he targeted Chrissy, thinking that she hadn't actually cooked a lot of catfish. I think Lynn's a d and I think he wasted his pick, because not only am I going to flay this fish, it's going to make it taste good with some mashed potatoes, and I'm not going home today, so dumbass. <laughs> Everyone else is cooking live Dungeness crab. Luxury ingredient. What would you do with crabs? I would make a stunning crab bisque. Get my crab poached and cool on first, crush up the shells, and then just roast off the most amazing fragrant vegetables with stunning fennel, leeks, onion, and then flake in that sweet white meat. Ew! I'm going to make a light, refreshing crab salad. I'm going to do mashed peas with a blood orange, champagne vinaigrette, and a corn puree. This is the first time that we have to kill a live animal in this competition. I'm Italian, so I'm going to keep it simple and I'm going to make a risotto. I'm fighting to take the meat out of the shell. I'm not worried to go home today because I know I will still put good flavors on the plate. I add some fish sauce in the stock to make Christine happy. At this stage of the competition, I really would like to shine at every challenge. Right, James, four pans going on. Uh, what are you doing? 
I just finished boiling my crab. Mm -hmm. I am shocking some tomatoes to peel them and seed them for mm -hmm. my Creole. I got some rice going. What's the seasoning in there? Uh, old bay, old garlic, bay. a little bit of white pepper. Any challenge you going home tonight? Not today. What about Chrissy with catfish? I don't know. She's talking a lot about eating catfish and how they eat it, but where I'm from, you don't put catfish with mashed potatoes. Well, good luck. Thank you, chef. Beth. What are you making, Beth? I'm going to make a crab cake with a peach salsa. What's in there? Right now, there's just shallot. I'm going to end up with some avocado in there, so I'm going to have some creaminess. All of this crab flavor, all this good stuff, you're leaving it all behind? I'm not going to use it. I'm trying to do something fresh. Thanks. Good luck. Mm -hmm. Right, Natasha, how are you feeling? I'm feeling good, Chef. And what are you doing? Um, so I'm going to do like a crab cake, and then I'm going to do nice. an assortment of a salad next to it with a lot of ginger, some lemon. And are you using the dark meat and the white meat? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's beautifully seasoned there. What else is in there? Just, just sea salt, a bunch salt. of sea salt. Watch those bok choy. Good luck. Just under 20 minutes to go. Awesome. All right, what's going on, Chrissy? Hey, Mashed how you potatoes. doing? potatoes. What the hell is that? Wow. What is this, like survival food? No, southern catfish. Is this like a Philly-style catfish? I don't no. It's fried catfish with some mashed potatoes and asparagus. You were in the top 13. You like, asked me to make catfish? This is how I, I make catfish. I asked you to make an excellent dish. Okay. I don't happen to think that this is kind of at the level we're looking at. I think that this dish is way below your capability. Are you playing it safe or you could be in danger? I'm, you know, I'm not I, I playing just, it safe. If you want to be a smart ass, I can be a smart ass too. I don't I'm think it's at the level. Ass. Well, I'm the one that matters anyway, what I think, so. Jeez. I know my fish is cooked perfectly. I know my potatoes taste amazing. This is a dish that anybody I serve it to would be really happy to get. It don't taste good. So, James is sounding absolutely delicious. Natasha's sounds incredible. What is she making? Doing an amazing cupcake. But just even from here, Beth does not look comfortable. No. Oh, this is a mess. This could be the end for Chrissy. She's doing, like, Sunday night leftover dinner with catfish she found in the store. Wow. Super stupid move on her part. I mean, it could be her ticket out of here. Christine, can you smell anything? It smells good. My stomach's growling. Two minutes, guys. Two minutes. Start finishing your plates. Taste everything. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and stop. Everybody, great job. Christine and Lynn, would you be so kind to come down? Lynn, could you make your way to your station, please? Christine, come and join Graham, Joe, and myself, because tonight you are our guest judge. It's really humbling to know that Christine's judging us. She has this amazing palette, and there is just high expectations. Right, the lady who Lynn had his target on her back, Chrissy and her catfish. Let's go, please. You know, the funny thing is, Chrissy kept saying how familiar she was with catfish, but it didn't look like it. I think my plan worked. Chrissy, what is it, please? This is fried catfish filet with some bacon cheddar mashed potatoes and steamed asparagus. Looks like a TV dinner. Damn, was that intentional? You left the skin on? Yes. But you know that skin is like snake skin. It's like a... So you're taking off the skin? Yeah, I've just yeah. peeled the whole thing off. I know you can't eat it. I just never had it any other way. Are you cooking for the judges tonight to stay in this competition, or are you cooking for yourself again? I'm cooking for the judges. Right. There you go, don't you? Here's your spoon. Christine, how was that for you? Tastes a little bit too earthy and catfishy. It needs a little bit more elevated flavor. Keeping that skin on. You allowed the fish to get really fatty. And I think Lynn may have just dealt a direct hit. It's, you know, the $6.99 blue plate special. This is an elimination challenge. What are you going to think if this is your last dish? Thanks. Catfish eats mud and algae. So what does it taste like? Mud. Your catfish tastes like mud. And my issue with you and our interchange before is that you think you know it all, then go cook it all yourself at home. I 
no, because this defensive act, no, shut, just listen to me a second. At this point, you're wasting my time. And I don't like to have my time wasted. For me, you're done. Good job, Lynn. At least you let me know who's really here to play. My fried catfish is delicious. It didn't matter what I put on the plate. Because I got in a fight with Joe, they were going to bash me no matter what. Told you. Tastes like you're licking out the inside of your fish tank. My fish tastes great. It doesn't taste money. Hey, Christy, whispering to your buddies around you is not going to help you. I said I knew it. If you want to talk behind my back, have the balls to say it up here in front of me. My fish tastes great. It doesn't taste money. Hey, Christy, whispering to your buddies around you is not going to help you. I said I knew it. If you want to talk behind my back, have the balls to say it up here in front of me. Chrissy, I'm sorry, but you need to show a little bit more respect for the judges and for everybody who's around you. You're there, you did a bad job. Be honorable, take it, go back to your station. End of the story. OK, next, uh, Natasha. Please, bring us something with flavor. Basically, what I did for you was a crab cake, and I did medley of salad with beets, pickled radish, and a champagne vinaigrette. When we do crab challenges, we always expect a lot of crab cakes, and we judge them pretty fiercely. What do you think? I think it was brave that you went with the Asian theme with the crab cake, so that I think that makes no, it no. interesting with mm -hmm. the cilantro and, and the ginger. Mm -hmm. The ginger really like makes it pop, you know, which is really nice. The beet salad's good. Put the little extra crab meat in there. I think this dish is really, really good. Thank you. Good job. Thank you, Chef. Thanks. Next is Brie. What is the dish? A summer crab stack with pea and avocado mash and some corn puree on the sides. Peas and crab are a classic combo, right? Shellfish and corn go hand in hand. Right off the bat, this should be hard to mess up. But then again, you're vegetarian. <laughs> it's almost spring moving into summer. You get the pea crab component, and then you get the corn and the claw and avocado. I, I like it a lot. This is delicious. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. OK, uh, James, let's go, please. Here you go, guys. Well, what is that? That is a spicy crab creole with rice and some seafood broth. Christine, what do you think? I really like the heat that comes on at the end. There's levels in flavor, I think, for that dish. So that's very interesting and very good. Thank you. I mean, that dish is phenomenal. Um, it's got the right kind of heat. The blend, in terms of the Creole seasoning, is absolutely 100% perfect. Great job, seriously, because that is delicious. Well done. Thank you, guys. Next is uh, Beth. And what about this dish? Dungeness crab and mascarpone crab cake with Meyer lemon and herb creme fraiche and a grilled peach and avocado salsa. Woods. It's completely raw. All I taste is raw mealy flour. I have to sort of agree with you on the texture. It's not it's my cup mealy. of tea. So sorry. Intolerable at this point. It's disgusting and it ruins my palate. And it's so really, sorry. really, really bad. I'm sorry. That is disgusting. I'm sorry. So you've never made crab cakes before? Or you've never broken down a whole crab? Um, both. <laughs> um, mm. I'm landlocked in Tennessee. And I try so hard to eat local that mm -hmm. seafood is a rarity for me. It's like a treat that I eat when I'm traveling. Look how thin it is. It's yeah. more of a, a crab pancake than a <laughs> crab cake. Yeah, it's... It's not good no, at all. It's really pasty. Yeah. Wow. Beth seemed to get worse reviews than me. 
Please let that mean that Beth is going home and not me. Next up, Luca. Let's go, please. Good. OK, why don't you explain your uh, soup to Christine? Uh, actually, it's a risotto. Say that again? It's a risotto. Why does it look like a bowl of soup? I made a mistake on the presentation. So it's a risotto of crab. Crab, asparagus, and lemon. Oh, it sounds... Yeah, hard. I'm just trying to get rid of the stock. Otherwise, I'll be serving this through a straw. There's your spoon of uh, crab kefirs, very liquidy. The initial taste for me was too salty. Did you add a lot of salt to the dish? Last challenge, though, I had a problem that was bland when I thought it was good. Every time you slip back into your Italian safety net, you start screwing yourself, because that's not a risotto. It's a disaster. It's kind of embarrassing. I know. Is that a fish sauce on your station? They put just a touch. Go get it. What is that, Joe? Fish sauce. Fish, fish sauce. Fish sauce. In a risotto. Why? Oh, because it's Christine, one of most favorite things. That's one of your favorite ingredients? It is, but I don't think I would put it in a risotto. To put fish sauce in an Italian risotto, I think all of Italy will weep a little bit. So will you. I just hope you're not crying at home. You thought your sauce? Good night, Luca. To put fish sauce in an Italian risotto, I think all of Italy will weep a little bit. So will you. I just hope you're not crying at home. Good night, Luca. I'm so embarrassed. It's Italian. I should shine on a risotto. I'm in the bottom. I may go home today on a risotto. All right, guys, we need a minute to discuss. I know we can cook. I second guess myself every time, you know? This, this competition is definitely hard. Uh, I wasn't fond of the way Chrissy cooked the catfish, What's I up? think. If you're going to make an example out of me. Serious. Fish sauce and resume. Yeah, that was strange. You weren't in the bottom. <laughs> you weren't at the bottom, bottom. I don't, I'm not sure. I'm not I, think, sure I think I'm going home. Back to your stations, please. Thank you. That was tough. But we have come up with a top two. The first person who put together a winning dish with bold, exotic flavors. That dish belongs to. Natasha. Woo! Well done. The second dish used the crab to its full potential. We declared it the best dish this evening. Congratulations. Come on, please. Seriously, well done. James. Great job. Oh. I absolutely deserve this. I've been working my ass off to get above the pack, and finally I'm being recognized for it. There is no better feeling than this right now. Both of you are safe from elimination, and you now are team captains in your next challenge. Now to the sad news. The three worst dishes of this evening. At least one of these three home cooks will be leaving this competition. Please step forward, Beth. In this second disastrous dish, the home cook absolutely wasted their crab. Please step forward, Luca. And the third terrible dish was put together by a home cook in a very lazy manner. Come on down, Chrissy. I'm pretty sure everyone's sick and tired of Chrissy. She needs to go home. You three, for at least one of you, it's your last night in MasterChef. Luca, step forward. Young man, highs and lows, up and down. We're losing patience. Fish sauce in a crab risotto? How ridiculous. Fortunately for you, there are two worse dishes than what you produced. Back to your station. 
Beth, tonight, you just produced a plate of blanders. You let yourself down because you didn't believe in what you were doing. It wasn't the Beth we've been used to. I know that I messed up, but I really, really, really don't want to go home today. Chrissy, I think you're taking this competition for granted. Not at all. And unfortunately, with the attitude, you haven't got the talent to back it up. I have not had one bad dish in this competition, and Beth over there has had about five. The person leaving MasterChef tonight I'm sorry, your time is done. Chrissy, get it together. Back to your station, please. Beth, yes. let me tell you something. You've got to start believing yourself more and take everything you've learned from this competition and continue, OK? I will. Thank you. Good night. Being a master chef has inspired me making it this far. I never could have dreamed I would get clean and accomplish what I did. That's one of the biggest things this competition's given me is a clear sense of not only my voice on the plate. That is delicious. Thank you. But the sort of person I am, and that was what I wanted more than anything. <laughs>